Every Friday we take a break from the hard issues of the week, the problems that we are facing, to focus on some lighter topics, but hopefully some that will be of value and benefit to you. Today we're focusing on creative arts, and uh, I remember yesterday just asking myself, what exactly is creative arts? Mm. And when you go online, man, there's a lot of content, a lot of different definitions, but let me say two things. One, it means having the ability or power to create. So our guests today have that, an ability to create. And secondly, it's people who are in drama, theatre, film, music. I think you said Makeup. a little bit of that Makeup as well. Artists. Makeup, yes. yes. Okay. Photographers. Yeah. It's a big range when you say creative drone artists. Drone operators? Mm. It's, it's, it, you, that, yes, that's the problem. Kind of defining it is a bit hard, but we have people here who are doing it, so hopefully they'll be able that's to. That's a good one. Wait, wait, you caught me with that one. Drone yeah. operators. Yeah. Is it not more technical? But I get what you're saying because you have producers, film producers, music producers who still use it, but it's also a, a technical gadget that is used in other um, industries, mm. military. So just because True. I operate it doesn't mean I'm a creative and I'm a military you a personnel. Creative? You right now. Uh, a journalist creatives. We're gonna let's hear Actually, from them. Actually, yes, because we, 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 the whole point of because from what you're saying, it's having to show imagination of the creative yes. mind. We tell Anything stories. Where you have to we tell stories. Your audio, um, radio. You, yes. you, you tell an entire story in 30 minutes, and it's all audio. Yeah. So we are as journalists also creatives in a sense. Look at us. That's all right. Answer. Let okay. us <laughs> let us start from there. So we'll allow every individual here in studio to introduce themselves and tell us why they chose the specific industry they are in today, and we'll begin from here. Feel free to. Okay. You go. There. <laughs> okay. Hi. My name is Cindy. Um, I'm actually, I studied to be a medical psychologist. And oh. when I got out, mm -hmm. um, I went into corporate for a bit. And then I decided to go into my side hustle full time, mm -hmm. which pretty much um, is makeup. And on the side, I also have, um, I run a page mm -hmm. where I sell skincare and I do um, beauty consults makeup consults and skincare consults. Mm -hmm. So then from there, we can get into creating a regimen for an individual person and getting their skin health in check. I feel like I want to ask her more questions because just her alone in itself. I mean, she's told us how she, after finishing school, she went, to, you actually said medical psychology is what yes, you said. Yes, I did medical then psychology. Then you went into a bit of the corporate world, mm -hmm. corporate world before you went and did your side hustle, which has now become your main thing. Yes. I'll hold myself. Barry, please <laughs> introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, my name is uh, Barrington Kangona. But I'm um, known as Barry Tasker. I'm a tattoo artist, uh, but in school I did architecture. Yeah. You've told us the what, you've told us the what, now tell us the why. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, I found uh, like uh, tat being uh, like tattooing as a different form of art compared to the other arts, since uh, it's a moving art. Mm -hmm. That's why I decided to do tattooing. How many tattoos do you have on um, you right now? Uh, I've wow. joined them now. I have sleeves. Wait, is, wait, Barry, you don't have a single tattoo? No, I have sleeves. No oh, sleeves. Yeah. Well, what are okay. sleeves? Sorry. Okay, Pardon. sleeves are a continuation of tattoos to form one piece with maybe different ideas together. You know, now I have to ask you can, I, can, I see, can we see them? <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to ask you that. Yeah. You need to start undressing now on live TV. Well, look, well he's, he's just going to show us. It's it. just on the arm, right? You don't, uh, please yeah. don't take off your shirt. Just, just show us. The sleeve, just that uh, our viewers can see a little bit about what. Okay. So this is what you do. Yeah. On a, this is your day job. Yeah, pretty oh, much. Wow. Okay, so just hold your hand out for a bit. Our cameraman is trying to get a zoom okay. in on that. So th that's what you call sleeves. No, this is like a sleeve. So different pieces joined together. Tell me a little bit about one or two of the pieces. What what, what um, am I looking at? Okay, now like this one is a koi fish. It's a Japanese fish, uh, embracing like uh, blessings, good luck. All that. And I'm a Pisces and I was born in February. So this this entails that. And also my name here, Baritaska. And also some tribals and also I had a scar here. I had to cover it with the tattoo. So so is it all creative or every single drawing and every single ink has an intention? Yeah. There's sure. a reason why you chose the fish and yeah. it all okay. Yeah, and other pieces, my work name. Yeah. Do you do that yourself or as an artist, well, like do you the, get someone else to do it for the, you? Um, someone else. Has, uh, like, has I don't do know how he's going to be able to do that yeah. and then he's flinching. <laughs> yeah. I want to find out from you what, what, you, what your parents, guardians, I don't know, okay. family told you when you said, My, I'm going to work or what do you do now? Mm. Uh, and then you try and show them and then they don't understand. Thank but let's, let's listen to him. <laughs> now tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm Steven Derito. I'm a photographer. My background is in graphic design, uh, but I, I got into photography around 13 years ago. So I run my own studio, it's called Photomagic Studio, but I'm also the chairperson of the Photographer Association of Kenya. Um, I also got into training in photography around seven years ago. 
Yes. Okay, Zilani. Hi. Um, I am a graphic designer. I, ha I actually, similar to I did a degree in sociology first, and then I loved art too much, so I decided to move to it immediately after. Why graphic design? Yeah. Why did you not become a tattoo because artist like Barry? <laughs> Because, <laughs> that's a bit, um, probably because it was easier to just transfer my skills, to learn the applications, to transfer the art, to learn it quicker mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. yeah. So I did a computer course, then I also did a degree, and, I, and it was a way to, it, I guess, graphic design, you monetize being an artist. You can you monetize, monetize being an artist. Yeah. Before I come to St. P, you haven't told us why, you told us what? You gave us your CV, but not the, the thinking behind why you, why 13 years ago you chose that path. And it seems like you were, you were very clear from the beginning. We haven't had you saying, first I was this, then I did that, then photography. Just tell us the why behind your photography career. Uh, photography was somehow by chance. It's a hobby that, you know, grew wild, but was adding value, just like you said, to the graphic design work that I was doing, because you find that people need good pictures for us to design for them some nice graphics. So I got more into photography. It was a hobby then, I, people started paying me and um, I needed to make money. I don't think I want to <laughs> throw in any other strange reasons as to why I got into it, but, uh, but I still love it. Uh, I enjoy what I do as a photographer. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, St. P, introduce yourself to Kenyans and what yeah. it is that you do and why you do what it is that you do. <laughs> My name is St. P. Wow, I'm just hearing your stories, man. I'm really encouraged and I feel like I'm out of place. But my name is St. P. I'm a music producer. And the reason why I started producing was because I was broke. <laughs> like I was too broke. I, I like your pay. honesty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I couldn't pay a producer because I started out as an artist, but I couldn't pay a producer, let's say 3,000 shillings to do um, my project. Uh, that time I was working as a chef. So uh, we used to be paid like 200 shillings per day, 203 shillings per day. So when you quantify that, it's 6,000 a month and 3,000 to give a producer, it's no, you can't. So, but then I realized that even as I was, I was young, I used to make beats. And when I was doing my first project, I was telling the producer, I want the beat to sound like this. So from there, I was like, okay, I think I can start uh, producing. And then at that time I was doing architecture and I didn't want to do architecture. And then my uncle was like, you know what? When music starts paying you 10,000 shillings a month, no, a week, then do music. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's not paying you 10,000 a week, you will do everything else and music will become secondary. St. P, you went from architecture, chef. <laughs> yes, hustle, boss. <laughs> yeah, una hustle. So, kipata msera taka kucharua nyumba and you had, and I, di I didn't go to school. I have no documentation to show mm -hmm. that I, um, um, you know. Um, so high school was? High school, I, I, I remember just, I saw my dad's drawing and I just fell in love with architecture. So since then, since I was, my first house I drew it when I was 17 years old and it got approved. I was like, okay, so I watched a and I ended two EV. Then I couldn't go to college because I used to be a rebel. So by the time when I cleared school, I was told, just get out of that door. We can't be two men in the house. Mm. <laughs> so now through that, I couldn't go to college. Then hustle, hustle, hustle. Years later, now I'm a producer. Oh, wow. Cindy's really smiling. <laughs> I don't know, what is he saying that's resonating with, with your story? Talk to me about the challenge of getting into the field you got into. Talk to me about the money as well and the conversations you must have had with yourself about that. Um, so my expectation getting out of, I went, I did my degree in med school, School of Medicine Moi, and my expectation was I'm um, coming out, you know, making big money. But um, on the ground, it's very, very different. <laughs> there were no jobs. <laughs> there were no jobs. Well, I got a corporate job after, immediately after, after uni, and I was happy to. Um, but still, like there was so much bureaucracy. So there's just, there were so many hurdles, but I had my hustle from when I was in uni. Of course, um, it was an, innov an innovation of to amp up my pocket money. So I just, I went into that. I started, um, you know, I started getting like um, influence maybe from like YouTube and Instagram, following medical estheticians. And so then I started to get an interest and actually study. Um, so now, yeah, so pretty much, I feel like I'm an expert in my field, in take, what I do. Take me back to probably when the conversation you had with your parents, when you told them mm, this medicine thing, no. No, my parents have been very supportive. Mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> yeah, my parents have been super, super supportive. Um, getting out of school, I remember my first um, real job was at KNH. 
and um i did for some lady therapy and it was so traumatic <laughs> it was so traumatic i had to excuse myself and i went out to cry and that's when i knew that i would i could not professionally help somebody because you don't want to be going to your therapist and you're crying with your therapist wow. so yeah so i i thought you know like this aesthetics thing it's it's a, it's really good i still make a difference still changes people like you would be surprised at how a boost of confidence in somebody's skincare just makes them you know like revolutionize completely but but why skincare why 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 makeup how do you move from being a medical student and all the way to makeup where was that link or is okay. makeup something you just enjoyed on the side makeup is something i've always enjoyed because i mean you're pretty we're in this insta generation everyone wants to look nice right so if you can be able to look nice on your own on your own terms and not pay somebody to make you look nice and added advantage that's how i got into it but for the skincare bit it just made sense because um once your skin looks good the makeup application is flawless so yeah I think that. Okay, let's hear from Barry. And Barry, I want to understand from you first of all, learning how to be, is, and the, the technical word is a tattoo artist. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Is there a course? Is there a school? Is there, uh, you know, just help me understand that. And also, the most irritating question that you keep being asked about what you do, or the question, I mean, you're like not, you see someone asking that, you're like, boss, I don't even want to talk to you right now. Tell me those two things. Okay, uh, being a tattoo artist, uh, tattooing is just like a skill that someone can teach you and then uh, depending on your passion in it it's it's gonna take like uh, how the art form of art like a different form of art from it so how long would it take to teach me uh, start today? basically it's normally around like three four five years but now the course three, four five years yeah. not months no the months okay the first few months you talked about how to use it and the, the ideas behind it and the different forms of uh, art embracing on different parts of the body and then now, it's you know to to put that in, into skill. Mm -hmm. and, Do you have uh, to be a drawer yeah. for you to be an artist? Like, yeah. like he doesn't have drawing skills. I don't know why she's saying that. Because he's never you, asked me you, to you draw see, something. Have you? No. I've seen your drawings. You take, take back that statement. I've seen your drawings. Okay. Carry on with the question. We'll okay. talk about this later. Okay. So, <laughs> so do you automatically have to be? A drawer, some sort of an artist you've had um, experience with the with the pen. So okay. lastly, that's a plus on it. Yeah, in a way that uh, you can get different clients uh, with different uh, requests. So some designs you have to customize them. Mm. So being an artist from drawing will be a plus, like to you getting like more creative on designs. Okay. Yeah. And, and the last one I asked you, uh -huh. quest, the question you keep being asked, or questions you keep being asked, which mm -hmm. ones are they, for example? That um. How do you normally do some parts mm -hmm. on someone? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and also, is it painful? Which parts of the body is more painful than others? And also, like, do you get money from it? And also, <laughs> like, many, many weird questions. Okay, I'm really curious about the first one, but it is morning TV. Mm. I think we'll talk about that a bit, a bit later on. I know yeah. we're due for a break, but maybe since we get one or two more. Yeah. A comment and, and even as you just give us insights into what you do, if there are two careers right now in Nairobi that I think I know a million guys who do, I know every second guy is a DJ in this city, <laughs> and every third guy is a photographer. Yes. Tell me about that. Is everybody a creative photographer? Because every other young man I meet now tells, tells me, Mimi, photographer. What's any good enough for your Maybe before I get to that question, I want to ask why when you're starting, you say that Friday is the day you handle light things. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you, talk, you don't take us seriously? No. <laughs> because uh, it means you take our issues lightly, but uh, that it's also defines how we are perceived. Okay. Yeah. Fair point. <laughs> we, we, we take we'll a fair, right. fair point. Fair yes. point. We'll reply. But about photography, um, many people think that it's easy to be a photographer. That's just like your smartphone that takes 48 megapixels. <laughs> you just take out the phone or get a camera and click. But there is so much that goes into it. Mm -hmm. Even if there isn't many formal training places, it's not that easy. There is so much. Even as a person who trains in it, there are so many things that go into it, but people assume it's very easy. That is number one. Number two, there are opportunities that have come up. Uh, I believe like the topic we are discussing today, there are so many opportunities, um, just like many other creative arts for photography. So social media, digital marketing, a lot of visual communication. People don't want to read stuff. They prefer to look, watch. So photographer opportunities are there. Yeah. All right, um, Zilani, before we take this quick commercial break, you're also a school 
an art school lecturer. Yes. And yeah. also a graphic designer. Yeah. Talk to me about how technology has changed your industry, graphic design. Graphic design. Mm -hmm. I mean, technology, in terms of there's so many people who now have access to technology. You just need a laptop, you need apps, and you can create. You can, in terms of film, like he said, you can use a phone to shoot. Technology, you can shoot a film. There's even these smartphone film competitions. So at the school I teach at the Africa Digital Media Institute, we teach various top things like graphic design, film, music production, mobile apps development. That's mm -hmm. definitely something connected to quick technology. Question, quick question. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, technology has quote unquote watered down graphic designer? What, what a phone is to a photographer? Yeah. What a, like what, what yeah. Stephen is saying? Yeah. Just because nowadays we have our fancy phones and it has a camera yeah. does it, and you take a selfie, I mean, yeah, doesn't, doesn't qualify you to be a photographer. Yeah. So just because I'm using an app or now because technology has come in and you can do all these things that makes yeah. it so much easier, yeah. has it watered down graphic design? I don't think so because still the people who are good are going to rise to the top. So it doesn't matter what skill set, it just means that those people now have access. The people who are good now can get those things easier so that we can see their skills. Mm -hmm. yeah.